Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 14 of the Build Guide 2. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much to all support last week. As always, you guys are just smashing this series. <laughs> it is incredibly successful. I'm so glad you're all enjoying it. And I had a really fun time putting together a little high-density plaza here, right? This was a really fun little sort of nice transition into high-density as we start to move um, across one of Orchid Bay's geographical features, which of course is the river. So that's what I want to kind of work on in today's episode, is how do we cross over a river and maintain our road hierarchies and our designs without sort of looking at a new landmass and getting too excited and start filling too much out, and then before you know it, you're left with a lot of empty builds and you sort of lose inspiration for the city. I know this can happen quite a lot in our community especially. And I'd also like to do some really fun things with the road networks now as well as begin to honour our congestion charge system, which you guys really appreciated the toll booth in here last episode, so... Our cyclists are given priority, of course. So, that's what we'll do today. We'll work on crossing a river, continuing to bring in high density, and allowing our networks to reflect that as well. So for today's build guide, I'd like it almost to kind of function as a conscious flow of thought process as to how I approach sort of builds like this. So, I know I have an elevation here, and I know that at some point this is going to touch back on land, so I'm going to grab the same height with our level terrain tool, and then just remind myself that at some point, that, that one-way system has to come back down to earth and we'll factor it in against the coastline. Uh, let me know what you think should happen with the coastline. It's not a traditional sort of beach Miami front that you would expect here, so it leads to some different things, I think. I'm kind of thinking like a really long, almost narrow green belt that runs alongside the towers for pretty much the duration of the shore. But you might, you guys might have some better ideas than that, so please let me know down below. So, now let's start factoring in our network. So, often mirroring networks can be really helpful in just sort of bringing in that high dense infrastructure you know so let's grab some of our content creator keys and we'll grab this same one that we've been using which is the one with the stairs and then i want to match up now with those road guidelines um, that are actually on the keys so i know that we can stay straight with these don't worry about losing uh, that connection with the cycle highway we will reinstate that and this can come through and now we can just match those curves with the freeform tool and then a little bit of straight angle and that can go down here for the foreseeable we'll eventually have something down that way but what this will do is now start to almost create like a canal right it's kind of looking a little bit like more of a sort of proper canal rather than a river and having both the keys on the same side is quite in a powerful aesthetic isn't it especially once we've got our other layers all passing over it i think i'm on board with it so definitely happy to double key the river for a good chunk of it here maybe even all the way down here which would be interesting wouldn't it you know to have a walkable key that long will the ai just basically walk the entire duration of the key to get to where they need to go if they have the option i'm not sure but we'll find out together in this series as always cool so i like the way this is looking let's now mimic this uh, curvature uh, down to this other end as well okay so that is one of our networks in so as we begin to build up this side of the map, I'd also like to start experimenting with assets that I don't really use that often. And in this case, that's going to be uh, these little collection of bus-only roads that we got as part of the last update from... Was it Plazas that brought the bus-only roads? I think it was, wasn't it? I'm sure it was. I should know. I did the official tutorials. <laughs> it shows, shows how long it's been. So my thought process with this bus road is that it can function as essentially sort of a high-speed access ring road that runs into the downtown eventually from the highway once we crack this tile to build an interchange we will of course feed the highway connection through this way uh, so that's going to give access to intercity buses coming down here first of all and i think what we will do every time we want to have a stop because of course the game reads these as highway roads is to come in and upgrade a segment into bus pedestrian road where we can have a stop and then we can also feed people back and to onto the keys from here as well because we do have the pedestrian crossing alongside lots of detailed opportunities around here and other public transport convergence of buses. We've never tried this before. I don't know how successful it's going to be, but it's definitely something I want to try. So we're going to have this bus run, or this bus only highway road, uh, run for the foreseeable against this key line and we'll mix and match into other transport hubs that can converge with other stops on the metro and the train line, for example. Uh, there's a couple of different opportunities for us there. Wonderful, but I'm happy with this, right? Although the crossing isn't going to be specifically here. We just show that for the general 
sort of proof of concept, right? So let's come back now and grab our congestion charge roads that we set up last episode, and we need to create an interchange for these now. So this road here that's currently coming out of the wing four hills over this way, uh, we will do some more industrial nightlife stuff down here as well. But for this, I think we're going to go for six lane, and I think for the time being, we're going to make it bus only. Or well, bus roads rather, not bus only. Until this bus road starts, and again, I'm not entirely sure where that is yet, so let's just run this. Um, diagonally across here again. I'd like to be snapped into The guidelines that are holding the keys and the bus road because that's going to give me the straightest possible line So let's run with that one there as the general idea And eventually this arterial frame now is going to sort of curve off and you know go with downtown There's another opportunity for it to meet up with the bus corridor that's coming out of our other suburb So we're starting to see all those preparations come into effect now so we've got some warehouses over here, have we? Not warehouses, sorry. Um, four graveyards. Again, we'll use our collapse function to get rid of these. Please don't wait for them to do it themselves. Otherwise, everyone else is happy, I think, are they? Yep, yeah, everyone's all right. Cool. So, yeah, so we now have this parallel. Right, let's come back in now and grab our one-way road. So I'll talk you through um, one of my favorite little on-and-off slip ramp interchange signs. Uh, they're really fun to put together. So first of all, let's just cross everyone over the main road. It doesn't really matter where we're aligning for right now because things will change. Just want everyone to be sat over our road, and that's tremendous. Cool. Then we'll actually find where they want to come back down to earth, and then we can bring them down here. And then we can see again where they'll elevate as they cross over our train line here. Okay, so let's talk about configuring our little on and off ramp systems here. There's, of course, a million different designs, but I'll kind of talk through uh, one of my favorite little ones. So, first of all, what we want to do is actually break the bridge connection here, and then I want to come ahead and grab the two lane uh, one way road now, and then we're going to bring this down so it's not quite touching the ground but still going to be elevated then we're going to come down into there like that we can repeat those measurements if we want to we can find 600 on the elevation and again from that point to that point we can see it's a thousand so we we'll want to make sure that we draw that up again as well let's come up by three more there's a thousand let's come back to three lanes we come in cool and then what we can do is now we want to split the road that goes around this area um, either to the left or the right of the bridge, it's up to you which you prefer. Um, we can use the two-lane highway for this. By using a highway road, um, it ensures that the sims will read it as a faster route in and out of town. And then we just want to connect it into this bottom junction over here again. Bring it over the road, bring it back up. Again, just keep finagling it until you get those happy connections. And then, of course, change your direction to flow. Okay, it's really fun, really cute. It's going to give you some grand-looking infrastructure here as well. So now that we've built this side of the bridge, let's now turn our attention to the other side. So of course you could do the same again, there's no reason why you couldn't. The traffic flow might not be as efficient, but it would work. As long as it's not in kind of a too crazy area. Obviously you wouldn't start your city like this, this would bottleneck in a city start. Uh, but what I do want to do now is start aligning some elevated highway ramp uh, on this area here right next to uh, our road. In fact, I think we might have to knock it back a little further than that. Yes we do. So let's not align it right next to it, because that's going to cause us problems with connecting back in at some point. Uh, okay, so once this is done, uh, we just really want this as a barometer as to where we're going to start. Uh, I'd then like to come down into our small roads and grab the asymmetric from Mass Transit. And then basically in the first node that is adjacent to this one here, we want to start drawing in uh, this little ramp here. I'm going to go for six units, I think should be okay. And then I want to draw a little T-frame at the top of this road because I want to make use of the grid snappings here. So then I'm going to come back into the highway ramp with the one that we just used. We're going to align it with this grid frame right here. We're going to do a little three curve. And then we're going to do the same thing over here, but this time it's going to be a five curve. And then you'll see we'll now start maintaining these same distances between. And we just want to do that same thing again. We're going to go for three. And then this time we're going to elevate up by two elevation steps, okay, with our smallest elevation. Same again with this side, and then as they come up to cross here now, we can elevate up one final time, which will be a total of three small elevation points, which in vanilla uh, is enough to get us across the road, which is what we need here. Now I'm going to hit the guideline here so we can meet up with our friend, and then it's just about sort of judging your distances now, so we can go for pretty much four there. You're not going to tell that one tar distance in, no right? And then you want to use the guidelines and your curve tools now to essentially mimic uh, those curves back around so we can come here and again you can see just make sure just look down from the bird's eye perspective to see that you're maintaining those distances all the way around 
That's if you want the symmetry, you know, in real life, a lot of interchanges are not like remotely symmetrical. So it's kind of up to you which one you prefer to do. Cool. And then we can have this one go like that. Uh, and then you can find a happy snap point uh, somewhere along the road for it to come back in. I'm not massively happy with that one there. I might just want to end up moving my bus road a little bit here to give priority to the bridge. Which I do. There we go. So I just need to shift my bus lane over another tile now, which is okay. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Or you can move the pillar uh, of the bridge as well. Or if you're on PC, just get anarchy and it's not a problem. Then you'll be alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool, so we can move those frames now, get the freeform tool and just hook them back in. And of course, arrange your direction of travel. And the same with this one here. Uh, we just want this to hook back in at an angle that you deem appropriate into the road. Change every one around. Of course, we're not going to see this first slip lane get built yet or get used because there's nothing coming from this direction. But it's at least there. There's preparation now, right? And we can change that around. Everyone is flowing and wonderfully. And then once you're configured, you'll have something that looks a little bit like that. You can, of course, apply this to a highway, either reverse it or invert it, you know, whichever sort of orientation that you need and want to do. Then, you, of course, you can do it here. But it's going to give us some pretty chunky infrastructure and a nice little sort of main way a service interchange for people coming on the congestion route through into downtown. Fantastic. Cool. So let's grab those highway bus roads again now. And we want to just realign ourselves um, with the key guideline. But we want to go one more node across, I believe. Yep. We're also snap to angle as well. That's going to make everyone happy. Cool. It gives us a bit more detail in room here as well between. Uh, so I don't want this to run forever. Like I mentioned, I'd like it to sort of peel off the arterial as a bus. Not sort of like a way they would prefer, but definitely a sort of priority area for them, right? So let's go for that 45 degree angle there. We'll take this one off as well. And we can probably feed off some more pretty simple rudimentary local road systems here for holding suburbia as and when we get the demand for it. Okay, we can worry about that. Uh, in a second, okay, as we approach our train line and indeed the tar boundary here too. Uh, but first of all, to make this uh, useful, we actually want to also upgrade all this road here as well. So up until where the bus starts, this can be bus lane, and then as the buses leave this network to go onto their own network, and then probably like to come down into cycling, I imagine. I don't think I'm going to have another major public transport line through here. Probably not trams. Yeah, let's just go with the regular six-lane cycling road for right now. Okay, we'll of course keep encouraging people to cycle around Orchid Bay. This, of course, will run alongside buses now and cross over with metro and trains and walkability back and to from this side as well. It's all very exciting <laughs> when you start getting to play with sort of larger, beefier bits of infrastructure like this in cities really makes the sort of city start breathing and come to life a lot more, I find. That's where a lot of the satisfaction starts arriving for me. So we'll hit road guidelines and curve tools and keep everyone fed and watered with each other. Again, we'll configure these road networks exactly as we come to get them uh, during those episodes, but for right now, it is going to work. And I don't want to connect you in either at the minute either. Uh, because you will actually just ignore my congestion charge route, but not forever, right? We'll, we'll eventually fix that. But otherwise, this configuration is pretty cool. We've got a little service interchange now. Hopefully, we can see someone using it. There they go. Taking the ramps back on, and then boom, across the road and back into Orchid Bay they go. Really interesting to see if we get people actually walking down this bridge as well. Of course, there's no reason for them to at the minute because no one lives over here, but uh, one day they will have the functionality to walk down here. I guess we'll see, right? We'll see what happens together. Um, if you don't upgrade this road here into highway, what you can often have happening is they will come down here, stop at the light just to get back on the bridge again. So if you keep this as a high speed road, the AI will acknowledge it as the faster route and stay on the bridge road. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not too bad, is it? Uh, let's now turn our attention toward the riverside here. Because uh, I'd like to set up a new district in order to start bringing in some zone-ins today. And I also want to see if we can work on a ferry park as well, which should be quite fun to introduce ferries into the city for the first time. There's definitely opportunities for another intercity station out here too. So much I want to do. <laughs> so much. 
So we've also named today's area Creasy Gardens after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers, James Creasy. Thank you for your support, mate. Really appreciate it. And I hope this build lives up to your expectations today. But either way, now let's turn our attention to the bus aspect here. So rather than following and obeying a guideline, I think I'm going to bring in a manual placement of the bus only pedestrian road here because I want to have the pedestrian road first so I can see just where I need the high speed road to come and go and where I'm at my asset placement to sit. So while we're working with buses, it'd be rude, I think, not to include an intercity bus stop. So why don't we grab that one? I think we can all see that's going to look absolutely delicious, isn't it? At the foot of all those ramps. That looks great from here. <laughs> that's so nice. Absolutely love that. Very happy with that indeed. Okay, again, it's adding to our high density infrastructure, isn't it? I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so of course we're going to need a service point for you guys let's go ahead and throw this down now can't imagine it's going to be an enormous pedestrian area yeah, but we will leave one in anyhow let's see where we can squeeze this in uh let's just go for there for right now we we'll, might have to change that in the end configuration but a service is all we want for right now isn't it it's not going to be a huge pedestrian area cool so once that's in we do need to actually configure our networks back together We'll also have a look at some more convergence. So we've got a metro coming out this way. So of course that metro at some point is going to cross over the road and touch down with another metro station, possibly this one. Oh, it looks like there's some potential convergence spices here with these two. Again, content creator stations for metro are just absolutely unreal. Please go and get them. Great assets. Cool. Yeah, I'm definitely on board with this one, right? A sort of a high capacity metro here that's going to sit around all this stuff. It's going to converge with an internal tourist connection, which is great. Of course, it's not going to get a tremendous amount of use for right now because it's only going across the river. But at least it's connected and we can now afford to create our first underground metro line in the city. It's very, very small, <laughs> but it's a stop nonetheless. Cool. Alright, so now let's mark out a road uh, where we want our actual sort of road to come up and if it's going to sit there, oh come on, <laughs> these content creator stations can be extremely finicky sometimes, cool, and then we'll allow our local road network here now to sort of come back around this way, we can see again where we probably need to snap it off the angle, bring it in as close as we can get it, there we go. And then we'll let that run off and over the hills and far away, probably into downtown this one, I imagine, or some sort of localised build that will sit on the outskirts of the high density area. That's going to be good for me. So we're worrying about power right now. I'm just going to throw down this monstrosity in the middle so we can sync the power through. We'll have to eventually find a more natural synchronisation point, which will probably happen down here. Which we'll talk about in a second anyway. Um, you also need a service point or at least a earthquake sensor to jump the power through. So I'd also like to give this district a housing specialization. I think we're going to go for uh, some water wall because water wall is really fun. Uh, okay, so of course this frontage road here is going to be uh, running with the bus lanes for a little bit so I want my housing on a separate road let's just go for regular roads so right now we'll might change this out in our D10 timelines if we want to look a little fancier but then with these I just want to now start creating a couple of little spots where we can get in some water wall high density a really good one comes with plazas and promenades if you're missing it uh, but just much more modern looking housing I think and again, we want to be specific with these because of the vibe I want to happen here. I almost want these to essentially be sort of riverside condos that are going to sit in this part of the map. And should do quite a lot to decorate our waterfront for us. Of course, these guys, like everyone else, are going to want and require services. So let's go ahead and throw down uh, some fire boys right now. Let's get a fire station right there. Then we'll get a police station a little bit further down the way when we come to develop uh, our ferry network. I we'll just want to see what these look like for right now. Should be pretty cool. We can also get a um, bridge going back and to across here as well today. Which I might not do because I kind of want them to take the metro instead. But this isn't going to be busy for a long time anyway. Cool. Uh, you guys might need to give a little bit of leeway actually. Just because you're right next to the metro. That probably will cause sound issues for them. 
Go the monster all in, fill out the rest. And then we should hopefully sort of get an impression of these little condos that are now going to sit across here. And we know now because where our bus road is going to sit, uh, we can now upgrade this one back into high speed road. And then this can continue on its journey into the city. But so far, I really love that. <laughs> That's a uh, water wall, such a great asset collection. There's some really nice looking medium density assets in there, which are sorely missing from the vanilla game, I think. So I'm happy with those to sort of grow up and sit by here. They don't get too tall either, which is always appealing for me. Cool. Fantastic. So now let's head over here. Uh, you do want some water, I'm aware. We'll... Oh, sorry. Yes, for those that do prefer pipes under the roads, close your eyes. Um, <laughs> we did get a comment last episode, so they appreciate the warning. Uh, cool. So let's turn our attention to this area uh, for a hot second here. Because uh, I'd like to just have a little chat about what's going to happen with it. So I want to bring ferries into Orchid Bay. And now we're going to have to find somewhere to piece the very deep in. <laughs> this thing is an enormous beast and it's pretty big. Not one of my favourite assets in the world. But I only need the ferries out of it right now. When we come to develop this side of the map, we will give it a proper home and placement, but for right now, I just need fairies, okay? Cool. So, I'm hoping, I haven't actually tested yet, but that these fairies will indeed make it down the rivers and under the bridges in Orchid Bay, because there's a lot of them to navigate. And now we just need to find a place for a second stop to appear. Right, which I guess is going to be here, is it? It's going to make the most sense, I think, isn't it? So let's hook those back into their respective angles without hitting any road guidelines. There we go. Uh, and again, we'll hook this into something or someone at some point, but for right now it just has to have a connection. So let's bring it uh, under this road here. All right, so I've just spent some time analyzing exactly how I want things to go here. And I think we've got a configuration that we're going to be happy with. Uh, let's come ahead and grab our cycling roads again. So this arterial frame will now begin to peel off and be one of the main roads that kind of goes through downtown. It looks like there's going to be a tremendously happy point for it to connect in right there. We might just want to now amend that curve again. So it's a little smoother. There we go. And again, we can now just have that run off in a direction. It's going to meet up with this road over here with further cycle connections. We might want to just slowly grade that bridge back down to earth, though. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Cool. Train line will come across as well, of course. Now we'd like to focus on the metro. So let's grab ourselves a metro stop. I'm um, not sure which one we want to use here. We're going to need an, ele an elevated one. In which case, I think the plazas and promenades is going to be the best shout for that, isn't it? So let's bring that up here as well. And don't want it to be... So I think I'd like the bridge to cross... The road again that's going to give me more layers which is always this is really why i'm here right that's what we all play this game for is to see bridges crossing over one another <laughs> that's certainly why i play cool let's get a little freeform uh, uh, tool uh, curve in there cool and again that's going to give me a fancy layer now isn't it and we're already starting to add more layers in now you can imagine as the towers and the downtown begin to formulate behind this infrastructure we're going to get those trains and rail lines running into each other it's going to be Tremendously exciting. <laughs> really can't wait for it. Cool. So now let's grab the bus roads and decide what's going to happen with these. We need to change that pillar location ever so slightly, but that's okay. So with this road here, I think I'd like this to hook down into this uh, bus ring as well, if you like, for lack of a better phrase. I think we can call it that, right? But this road's going to be in the way, which is okay. I realise a bit all over the place in today's episode, but there's a lot of networks that need to be tied up and sort of finished off uh, appropriately. Going to move this frame here now as well. Really don't want to prioritize the ferry stop in the build here. And I think we're going to stick with this road here. We're going to go for how would a 10 curve treat us? And we're four units from the ground. It's a little bit too much. Let's instead go for a six. So we'll find five and then one more. Same again, find five and one more. And then we'll come down by two. And then we'll do that six curve again. And then we'll bring it down like that. And then hopefully now with a road guideline here based on this one, we can simply just allow our bus corridor to now extend under all these bridges. And I think we'll probably well just let it run parallel with the river and keep having a bus service running serving this entire riverbank here. 
It's going to be pretty cool because a lot of the high density public transport like metro and train is going into the city, which leaves very little to serve these areas. So I think bus should be quite nice for that. Uh, yes, just meander along and of course we'll get to you one day as we come back down that side of the city. And then same with you again. Let's see if we can get nice little happy straight curves here. And then you should just hop down in there. And that gives us bus access, okay? Which is very, very exciting. Uh, I'm keen to now get all of this flowing. So if we can hook you in in one go, are you going to be fine? No, you're not. You're going to be a pain in the ass. There we go. So let's get this metro flowing now as well. We're going to have to turn that other station back on now. We're probably going to experience quite a spike in upkeep costs this episode because we're turning on so many new stations. But it'll be worth it, right? Cool. So our bus corridor from the suburbia now comes down and hits in with the high speed bus downtown ring, which will now start to develop out this way, which is very exciting. So we'll throw in another horrible power connection there. And that's going to be good for everyone, I think. Should be anyway. Uh, can we squeeze a police station in here, maybe, actually? I think we might be able to. Maybe one of the plazas ones. I should go for that one. This one's a little a little bigger, isn't it? Do we maybe want to go for that police station instead? I think so. I think that might be quite nice. Uh, let's get a park down here as well. Let's not have everything sort of super concrete here. Uh, chuck a park on the corner, and then let's also get a little bit of sort of cutesy high street commercial growing up this way as well. And then there's lots of detail to be done here during our time lapse today, of course, which will be wonderfully exciting. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> it's so much fun to play with like all these new networks and like, DLCs. Like the DLCs definitely sort of make it pay to win, don't they? But goodness gracious, is it fun. We're looking forward to seeing some intercity people come here. Um, speaking of the bus corridor now, though, let's put it into action, shall we? This should be very exciting, especially for, our, for the bus gang in the comments. Um, so let's bring... Uh, a stop into our intercity station. Uh, you are then going to come down here and then hopefully... Yes, they are. They're going to use the bus corridor. That's great. So we'll get them to stop here outside of our metro, which again is more convergence. And um, this can then come down into our existing bus corridor, stop at the current intercity station, which again will converge with all of these lines that go pretty much all over the map. Um, and then it can find its way back. And where does it want to come in? Okay, so it will actually turn around there, which is interesting. Um, I don't really want you to do that, though, so that's okay. Um, again, I need this road ideally connected in now, don't we? So let's have a little look at where you're going to go. I don't want this to connect into the arterial frame, I don't think. So let's bring it along on an angle with some freeform action. We'll get that one going there and then upgrade this one. And then what we'll do here, um, I just want to turn this into sort of a big bit of green belt, I think. Might even end up moving this a little bit further up, I think. I'm not sure yet. We'll, 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 we'll come to it. <laughs> let's, let's draw the bus lines in first, shall we? Um, okay, so yes, we're working with this one. And um, we want to now grab your stop and hopefully bring you down to complete. We'll come down this way. Yep, stop here and then come down into the intercity. We'll stop. And that will see you complete now, won't it? We need to head back to our bus depot because these guys are going to be coming all the way out over here. Uh, I imagine it's going to be a pretty, pretty quiet line. So let's just go for a regular Thursday capacity bus. We'll change it to white as well. There it comes out. Wonderful. Cool. Otherwise, it is growing up and slowly piecing together here, isn't it? How walkable all these old areas are now. An incredibly satisfying city to watch, isn't it, everyone? I hope you're all enjoying it as much as I am. There's convergence and trains going everywhere, and lots of people walking. Basically, no car traffic as well. There's just so many people on the public transport networks. See this tram heading down here now as well. All these roads nice and clear still. Lots of people coming to grab these tramways up this way down to the high-density plaza over there. Oh, I just love it. <laughs> it's very fun. And now we can see that across the riverside starting to develop too. And then we've already got a fair few people waiting for that stop, haven't we? Guess to get back in. It's interesting, isn't it, how basically all these people live in this high density area. Not one of them cares for the underground. They all want intercity stuff. Interesting to see where intercity passengers go. Where are you guys going? Are you going to take the metro or take it? Oh no, almost all of you are walking into the housing, which is interesting, isn't it? Uh, we'll, we'll wait for a bus to turn up, hopefully. Shouldn't be too long now, I don't think. 
There we go. There's even some people using this road here now as well. I'm not sure where you boys are going. Uh, <laughs> just to turn around. That's so funny. Of course, they're not allowed here. <laughs> they're not allowed to come on. So I decided I think we're going to bring the ferry stop out of this road here. This is going to make this junction a lot wider, a lot more important, which will always again add to our high density vibes. So we'll pretty much either up where we can judge it. Shouldn't be too much of a stretch. There we go. That's going to be fine for me. And then we'll lose this one. And then this will become part of our nightlife industrial area that I'm planning for this section over this way. We should be fun. I'm going to try some new ideas for this sort of more dirty sort of waterfront area. Uh, there's so many waterfront opportunities in Orchid Bay. Um, I also want to do some cargo train stuff over here as well at some point. Maybe we'll head back over here at next episode and work on this little bit of space. Might be nice to do some cargo train stuff uh, for the first time in a while, I think. Okay, cool. But well, this is slowly wrapping up here. I think I'm getting happy with it. Uh, again, we'll perhaps just mark out... I guess the, the road would be a good barometer, actually, wouldn't it? Why don't we go over there, and then we can bring this across. And then hopefully a happy little curve here might see everyone through. Yeah, and then I'll use that as like a border for where I want my sort of green belt to end here. So let's go for build guide forest. And then I know everything to the left of this forest line here should become sort of ferry park. And now we can have lions running up and down here. And we'll continue to feed the ferries... Um, all the way up into here as well, right? You know, we'll keep them going for the duration and probably even eventually link them into the airport, which I'm planning to have on this island. So I guess we'll see how that turns out. It could be pretty interesting just to see how the AI wants to interact with the ferries. Uh, but I did notice we've also got a ton of people already cycling down here, uh, which is giving access to this bridge now, which of course is uh, only further activating all the cycling infrastructure we've got over here. So that's really fun to see. We could definitely carry one of these pedestrian roads over as a bridge as well if we wanted to. It's all about spotting those points of convergence. And in terms of this ferry stop here, I think what we will do is just grab a couple of one-way roads. And again, because I'm really focusing on people using buses and public transport in this city, this road access here can be used to access ferries in the Keys. If you want to drive into downtown, you even need to head through the switchback system here or come and pay the congestion charge through the couplet road to get back in there. Okay, so I'm really not relying on this bus corridor road here to carry a vast amount of traffic. Um, it's really just for buses and pedestrians to walk down onto Keys here. Which again, we'll see it come to fruition. Looks a little bit jarring right now. But once it's detailed, uh, which this does feel like a good point for our detail and timelines actually, uh, we've got lots of pathwork to do here, some fencing and tree patterns, and um, playground detail, etc. I also continue to drop in any service assets these guys require. We're probably at the point now where we want another elementary school. Uh, so again, like always, just we'll throw one down and build a little park space around it. High school here as well, perhaps. Look at that university availability already coming down into the orange. We'll be ready for a new campus soon, which is already so exciting, isn't it? And we'll definitely factor in a campus as part of the downtown, which will be quite fun. Uh, although we don't lock up that one till 30k of the 7k population, we can get that in before we do that. So that'll be a really fun build, right? Having um, the university as part of our skyline should be quite fun. Uh, and then I just want lots of really sparsely placed live oaks around here. Uh, and pretty simple patterns, just nice rural outer lying suburban green belt that all links in with our keys. And get all those keys hooked in as well, bring the cycle highway across here too. And then tie up all these detailed spaces, get the ferries flowing and everyone happy. And then we'll come back and see what it's looking like. But I'm tremendously happy though with the view here, right? This is a really fun sort of plaza vibes here, looking across to those waterside condos with eventual part detail out in front of them. It's very exciting. I'll also hook that pathway in as well across the river, see how that does for performance. But uh, otherwise, we'll detail it up and then we'll be right back.
Alright guys, let's have a little detailing review, shall we? So as we come into our park, we have a little Shake It uh, commercial asset here. And then of course, a little bit of park action uh, with some fencing, trees and some general assets in the middle. Just a simple city park here uh, to help serve as a transition as we move into what will be industrial and nightlife as we move down this part of the river. Uh, which will be a separate build of course and we'll relocate these services as part of that build. But otherwise, as we head into it now, we've uh, detailed up all this with bushes and hedges and trees and whatnot to help frame the bus corridor as it moves through the landscape here. Then also began to sketch out some wider sort of junctions off of this one here. So we're going to get this nice wide busy junction um, as we approach into our high density areas. And of course, we'll span this out towards the coastline and many more builds will fill this space, etc. We also need to remember to... Uh, save room for our highway here as well eventually what I would like to do is perhaps bring it over this way through the fields and then bring it down onto the coast and hook it in with the couplet again uh, which I think will be really cool of course because this is already hooked into the highway down here so huge highway connectivity now as we chase or trace this uh, couplet road uh, all the way through the city and then we come into some bushes and overgrowth and fencing around our slip ramps as people come on and off with a bit of amusement park fencing here as well uh, just to help change things up, which I think is quite nice. A little bit of commercial zoning next to the service point, and then the police station is here now, uh, where we arrive at some little plaza detail next to our intercity bus station, uh, where we have perfect asset. I spent quite a lot of time in the detail and time lapse looking at that. <laughs> I was like super distracted by it, I was like, this is the best. So nice asset placement here. Uh, and then this is just a little bit of vanilla walking pathway, again, poor man's surface painter to help extend those little vibes out. You can see how people use it now to get back into behind uh, and around the bus stop and then we come down into some car parking and I'm uh, really happy with the way that this vanilla condo complex has turned out. Uh, especially this block over here also dropped in more car parking. Uh, I'm really kind of building the road network around these car parking assets because we can see what it does right. Uh, we got some really powerful vanilla condo vibes here which is incredibly appreciated uh, just as we you know, analyze them from the street. It's very cool. Uh, even down in the back here as well, we've got lots of nice detailing with the way they've grown in, like bins and stuff, so it's great to see that in vanilla. Love these uh, water wall condo blocks again. This is with plazas and promenades DLC. Uh, if you are missing it, then go ahead and check it out. But really happy with it, right? Love it how it sits against this little bus road here, uh, which is getting used now, the pathway back over. Uh, lots of people waiting on this bus line to come and go, which is fantastic. Probably uh, actually wants an upgrade now that bus does it. Yeah, super busy line, so we can probably actually justify bringing that up to... Let's go for 50. We'll go for an articulated bus coming down here, make it a bit more important. Uh, and then more high density backing onto the pedestrian road. Uh, and then brought it through here with some extended bollards off of the road and a pathway that links back down the quay, uh, which is getting used now and there's people walking up and down everywhere. Uh, ferries, of course, as you would imagine, aren't too busy right now because there's not too much reason for people to use them. Uh, only really as they get further and further down will they really kick in, but... It's nice to have just a simple ferry stop here with a plaza, a little bit of fence in a tree, and a choice commercial asset just to create a little ferry stop here. I'm really happy with it and how all these networks have come across the river. Uh, it's really added to kind of like an active layer of height if we can wait for uh, the perfect chance here. There you go, you get the metro going across and all these cars and cyclists. It's just very active, this bus corridor along the water, people on the quays there now as well, which is just great. Yeah, it's, it's quickly become like a really favourite area. <laughs> Absolutely in love with this area now you can see. Uh, there's actually people using uh, this one here. I don't know if he's going to take the right turn maybe. Yes, there you go. So they are using it to come back down here now, which is great. So nice little service ramps to keep people uh, on and off with a one-way system on the congestion charge back into Orchid Bay. Uh, so that's working out really nicely. And then I think next episode, um, we're going to bring this train and metro stop together as a transport hub build, which I think will be quite a nice way to introduce the skyline, having like a major metro center here uh, with train and intercity train as well, of course, because we've got a line to play with out this way. So expect a big transport hub soon. And there's lots of possibilities out this side of the map. Want to get some stadia done as well, we'll of course, keep building down this way. And then I love this view down the road here now as well, right? All those little layers with the roads and the buildings and oh, so good, <laughs> so good. Uh, and then we come down here into this road here. We have upgraded this section into the ones with median and trees and cycle lanes just for a little bit of variation and to perhaps highlight the commercial and the parks sat along this bit of road here. But again, as always in Orchid Bay, there is a ton of people cycling 
more cycling than cars, right? Which is always a good sign. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, cycle infrastructure is incredibly strong throughout this city, which is really nice. Uh, and then we have a little school campus here, which is the European High School, which I have knocked back a tile. Uh, dropped in some of the parking assets and then a little bit of poor man's surface painter with a tree to try and create like an entrance for the school in vanilla, which I think is pretty effective. I'm a big fan of this one. Uh, shout out to Exy as well for the idea of putting the car parks, these vanilla ones, the one deep ones in front of assets. Uh, really nice idea that. And then we come through with pathways again that link through to the two road networks. There's also a gymnasium here as well from the healthcare tab. And then of course another mock sports field in vanilla with choice commercial assets. And then this spills back onto the road here. Uh, that does have a turnaround point uh, should they need it. And then we also have another exit off the cycle highway here. There you go. You just see now how many people are choosing not to pay the congestion charge, right? <laughs> and uh, drive instead or cycle at least. Uh, so really happy with it. We'll definitely keep this going um, into downtown uh, as it grows, of course, so people can just cycle all over the place. And then you would hope that the, your, your brakes don't fail here, right? <laughs> You're going to come right down here. Let's hope that the brakes work. Otherwise, it's a, a pretty wet end to a cycle, isn't it? But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. If you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Even if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Enormous thank you again for all the support on this series. You guys continue to just love every episode. <laughs> it is, it's very humbling. Uh, thank you so much. It's uh, just yeah, it's crazy for me to read all those comments. Um, never thought my channel would reach that level of engagement, but I'm glad you enjoy the videos and the playstyle so much. I'm having a ton of fun uh, building Orchid Bay, and for those that are building along as well, thank you for continually sharing all your ideas and comments and whatnot. Uh, it's all really helpful. I'm glad you're all having a nice time. As always, please enjoy your cinematics, but I will shut up and leave it there. I just thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.